Hi, I'm David Brevnik with the Brevnik Fishing Team. Today, I'm going to do part two of all you need to know about bait pins and keeping bait. Right now, we're talking on the channel all you need to know about bait. And it's very important. This is something I've, very, I've studied very much is bait and bait keeping because that is often to what leads you to being successful on the water. So, we have a lot to talk about, so let's jump right into it. So, let's t start talking about the, how, how many baits you can keep in a bait pin. So, what I like to do is depends on the species, like thread fins you can keep more of in, in a bait pin. Blue runners are going to be, be, need to be more spaced out and also the size too is something that affects them. Because like if you have like big blue runners like we like for kingfish baits, like 12, 14 inches long and you're going out for tournament fishing, you're going to want to keep those baits very healthy versus if they're like 6, 8 inches long, you can put more of them in a pen. Um, same thing for thread fins. But blue runners, they naturally will tend to school up, so you'll see them all clustered in a school, but you still want a lot of water, a lot of space for them. Just keep in mind that is their home. And think about it, when you get put in the bait pen, it's like if you're in a small area, the, all the baits are in a small area, it's like staying in your closet versus staying in like your whole house. So that's like the difference for the fish too. Because keep in mind, fish are living animals too, and they think and they feel certain ways, and that does affect the performance when you're using them. Because what you want is to ultimately have very lively, frisky baits where you can just throw them in the water. They're just vibrating everywhere and they're just calling all those big game predatory fish to come and just come eat them. So what I would recommend is it depends on also how long you're storing them. You could keep uh, like two dozen blue runners and a little bait pen, maybe like a 30 gallon bait pen for let's say a day or two if you just caught it right before a tournament. But if you're like me and you like to keep bait for a couple weeks or even just a week before, I've even kept bait for a month, you're going to want a bigger bait pin. Um, it depends on how many baits I'm keeping. If I normally for a tournament, I'll have two days for pre fishing and one tournament day. So that's about 100 baits for me because I normally go through about 20, 25 baits in a day on the water. That's the average. So I always have about 100 baits and I also have my dead bait, but that doesn't count. So 100 baits is what I normally would have and for that I would probably want, what I do is I have two big uh, DMB bait pins and I just keep one set for 50 baits and the other one for another 50 and they hold and it's about 5-6 feet long something like that, 3 feet tall, 3 feet wide and they're very good and if you want a custom collapsible bait pin from DMB I'll leave them below linked in the description. but. That's probably roughly around maybe 300, 400 gallons, I'm guessing is just an estimate. But that is good enough for like 50 baits because I always want to make sure I follow the rule of at least five gallons per bait fish when I'm keeping them stored up. And in the live well on my boat, I keep at least one to one for the big blue runners. But now thread fins, if you're keeping thread fins, you can keep more of them in too. You can actually put more, so if let's say the bait pan, let's say DMB's one, I think it's 47 gallons, this custom made one, the one that's already made already, the smallest one. I would be willing to put, if I'm keeping blue runners long term, 10 blue runners in there, or if I'm keeping goggle eyes, which I have not done yet, I'd probably keep put 10, or if I'm putting the Spanish sardines, or thread fins, or cigar minnows, I might be willing to put 25 for a week, but if it's the day before, I might put 30 thread pins in there or 30 cigar minnows or Spanish sardines but blue runners I might put 20 blue runners in there now 25 blue runners so it really also matters how long you're keeping your bait in so keep that in mind you always want to be more safe than sorry because the last thing you'd want is you wake up to go do a tournament or you go fishing and all your bait is dead and that would just be catastrophic so now let's talk about when you take your bait out of the bait pin I believe I might have said this in the last video but when you go take them out, you're going to want to take them out one by one, just scoop them out one by one because when their scales are hitting each other, they're flapping, they're taking the slime off them, which is like protective coating, that's like our skin. So also like when you when they fall on the deck, I normally don't like that. I try to not let them fall on the deck. I use a bait dehooker when I'm dehooking them. And what I, what happens when they fall on the deck, it's like you're getting a road rash. So it's like, it's like if I would push you on a road and you would get a big rash and start bleeding. That's almost like what it's for them, except... It's just their slime that's getting everywhere too. So, and then also, the only time you should be touching your bait is when you're putting them on the hook. When you're taking them out of the live well, scoop them out one by one, especially when you're going to put them on the hook, just one by one. It's not like they're in a big area and you're trying to get them really fast. One by one, because they're all in a little condensed area. It's not that hard to scoop baits out, especially when you have a bait net. If you don't have a bait net, I highly recommend getting one, because it's absolutely 
crucial to being able to go fishing because you can just scoop bait out so much faster. If you need to pitch a bait out really fast, you see a school of mahi or black fin tuna or kingfish out there, a school of fish jumping on surface, you can quickly pitch a bait out to them. So that's something that's very important to have is a bait net on your boat. But I find that the ones that I touch before I put in the live well don't do as well in the bait pen. So I try not to touch them. I use a little de-hooker and de-hook all the baits. When you have the sabiki rig full of baits, just hold the weight and you just use a little de-hooker and basically just lift them upside down. I have a video on coming up on how to do that in the future. Just lift them upside down basically is the idea and the weight will put, take the fish off the hook. But And then when you go to put them in, put them in one by one to speed up the process. What you could do is you take two or three, one five gallon bucket is good. But have some five gallon buckets, put some water in it, maybe fill it up halfway. Put the baits in one by one, take them out one by one and put them in the bait pen and same way getting them back onto the boat to go fishing. That way they're staying healthy and they're not beating up against each other. Like, so keep in mind, even though when their tails are flopping, think of it as like if I were to like smack you, not not very hard, but if I were to like hit you with like the back of my hand, like maybe going like this or like that, and think about the fish just moving at a lot faster pace. So that's something that you might not notice, but you will see. And also keep it, when you keep touch a blue runner before you put in the live well, if you caught it that morning and you're staying out and say it's like two or three o'clock in the afternoon, you can see your hand mark on that blue runner. I know it looks cool, but that's probably not a good thing. But what I like about blue runners, they're very hardy and they can take a lot, they can get beat up a lot too. That's also something that's very good about cigar minnows and also cigar minnows, and I know the same thing for Spanish sardines. They can take a lot of hits on each other, but when you throw them in the water, they're not lasting very long, so that's something good, but you always want to make them be fresh in case you're not over a school of fish or something. But if you're over a school of fish, blue runners and cigar minnows are my go-to baits when I'm really out offshore king fishing, which is what I'm doing a lot of right now because they're running in my area. They're running really good and got to get ready for tournaments coming up in late May now because they got moved back. So now let's talk about feeding your bait. It's important to keep it, your baits healthy and filled. So what I noticed the first couple days, they won't eat. But depending on how hungry they were, like if I'm, if, let's say if you were to catch bait the day before a tournament or day before you go fishing, I would put a little bit of food in there for them. They might not eat all of it, but they'll still peck on it and you want to make sure they're full and they're fat. Like I kept bait for a month and they got very fat and healthy and I kept them very strong. So that's also why you want a bigger bait pen. That way they can move around more. So I'll have D&B bait pens linked below, which is the one that I use. I highly recommend them. They're very good. So I'll leave them linked below, dbmarinesupplies.com. If you need fish finders, go ahead and check them out. They got Simrad, Ray Marine, Garmin. They got specials going on all the time too. So make sure to check them out. Get some good fish finders. They got a lot of great deals going on. So make sure to check them out. And I believe on almost all, or actually I think all fish finders have free shipping on them too. So go check out dbmarinesupplies.com and go buy something from them that you need for boating or fishing or something like that. That's also where you can buy all DMB rigs and bait pins. And if you want, I can give you the email for DMB bait pins. It's uh, dbbaitpins at gmail.com. I'll have that link below in the description once again. So now let's talk about feeding your bait. So what you want to do, you could buy like that food that's like, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like bait food. You just throw it in the water like little pellets and they'll eat that. But what I like to do is I like to keep when I go fishing and I catch a bonita, keep it, put it in the cooler, make chunk baits out of it, and when I go, I just drop them in the bait pen and let the fish pick on it, the bonita, and they'll eat it, and that gets them very healthy. Also, something I really like to also do is put some squid and some shrimp in there and let the baits go eat that because it's very natural for them. But what I notice about thread fins and Spanish sardines is that you normally don't get this; they don't really eat the other baits. But this is more for cigar minnows or blue runners or baits that eat other fish or lady fish so you want to put or even pinfish if you're keeping them put some shrimp some squid some sardines in there frozen stuff I normally throw frozen fish food in there I normally don't like to go buy all this stuff because I have lots of bonita chunks that I just throw in there I might it depends on how many there are but I figure one uh, four inch piece of bonita that's about an inch thick is good for three or four baits so if I have ten of those that's good for 30 40 baits but that's it's also something good to keep in mind to feed them every couple days what I notice the first few days I put them in normally they won't eat but sometimes they'll eat a little bit and also when you have the bait pen the glass minnows around your dock and the little minnows and stuff they're going in there and your fish are also eating up on those too 
Also something what I notice when I keep baits for a longer time, like a few after a few weeks, I notice when I open it up and if I feed them every day, every other day, which I recommend feeding every other day, I'll open it up and they'll actually come up to the surface, be ready for the food, you drop it down and you see them just going all over it. So what I normally like to use is shrimp or bonita shrimps, uh, Spanish sardines like or the frozen sardines when you go buy them. The squid also works good. So just buy whatever you think you feel like buying. They really will eat anything. Um, you could also put some live baits in there. Like if you have like a dock and you go catch them right off the dock. If you're in a marina and you throw a cast net and you get some baits and you throw them in there. They'll also eat those. But I prefer a dead baits. So that way they can just go around and peck on them. And they're not expending as much energy. That way they're getting fatter. And when you put them in the water they're going to be big and fat. And the fish are going to want to go after your baits more. Rather than somebody else's baits. Like say there's a bunch of boats in a spot. And they look at all your guys' baits. If your bait is fatter than the other guy and it's bigger and you have the same presentation, it's going to go after yours because it's more for, it's like more bang for your buck is how you can think of it. So that's pretty much it for feeding baits, guys. And I think this will do it for the bait pins video on all you need to know about bait pins. So thanks for watching, guys. And until next time.